Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? My name is Zumit. Um, I am representing Erstad. I work for uh, uh, Advanced Analytics team in uh, IT. So my presentation will be a bit more with an IT flair to it. Not so much details about the actual models. Uh, so bear with me. But at the end of the presentation, we might take some questions regarding the details. Uh, you have already, some of you have already heard about Ersted, my colleague uh, Peter. He has been here earlier today uh, presenting uh, the company. Um, but for those of you who are not here, I want to play a short video. I'm lazy, I'm from IT, so I want to play a video for you that would tell you about what Ersted is, our vision, and how um, yeah, we'll be able to perspectivize a bit on uh, how analytics is playing. Uh, a role in there. And action is not possible without doing a lot of analytics. Um, before I continue, um, I wanted to kind of uh, say a couple of words about how this green transformation is happening and how afterwards analytics is helping that. So uh, Ersted is operating, owning and operating uh, 23 wind farms. It's uh, on the green side, on the darker side, there are 11 uh, power plants that are being converted to uh, something called uh, uh, sustainable biofuel, which is um, which will lead to uh, in 2023 will lead to completely coal-free uh, production of electricity in those plants. Uh, on the sales side, uh, we maintain and operate our um, infrastructure. Grid and infra grid infrastructure. So, uh, being able to run the world entirely on green energy um, would require a lot of effort from IT. So, um, back in 2016, there has been the whole um, agenda about the uh, transformation uh, of the company, where it was decided that IT without IT, it's not possible to do it. Yet, um, because we're living in a, in a time, in a very interesting time, where uh, being able to differentiate based just on a price is a bit slippery road. So companies are uh, seeking uh, for higher profit margins, they are uh, seeking for exponential growth, and they are differentiating based on new products, they are adding new digital products into their service catalog. And uh, there has been a decision from the management where, all right, uh, what can IT do for that? So we've been involved and uh, we've been discussing about, uh, you know, what do we need to do in order to be able to kind of deliver this, um, this kind of mm, performance? So we, we decided, true, we need to be better at making the um, research. We need to be better at predicting, we need to be better at uh, operating our facilities and assets. We also need to be better at doing marketing and actually being able to do, uh, well, offer the, a better user experience to our clients. This brought about uh, a digital strategy uh, where the digital strategy is based on bringing the advanced analytics and um, uh, automation to the table, actually to all parts of uh, all business units that are in Ersted. So you've probably met, saw already that uh, we have wind, we have different power plants, we have um, um, the grid. So it's basically the whole chain of uh, energy production and sales. Uh, so basically when you turn on the light, all the things that can happen before the light is on is actually delivered by Ersten. That actually also means that there is lots of operations and um, a lot of people are dependent on the smooth operations and maintenance that is happening. So, <coughs> so to give a couple of examples uh, on how um, we are helping Ersted in uh, building this kind of function, um, I'll start with the point that the customer is always in the center. So everything starts with our customers. 
um, basically analyzing before in time we were analyzing what what uh, like during the day what has happened during the day based on the consumption and we found out that uh, probably it's a good idea to be able to offer a different type of service being able to differentiate on the tariffs and say well uh, probably the time where it's most um, pressure on the on the grid is the most expensive time to use it and the rest of the time is actually very cheap so people would be incentivized to uh, you know to to use electricity more wisely um, that actually led us to understand that probably we need other type of metering because before in time it was just normal meter that would uh, give you the information once a day maybe once a two days now the meters are being changed they need to be delivering you the information next to real time Probably one, one, uh, once an hour um, is fine, but uh, there is also a possibility to do it even faster. So there has been an initiative to exchange all those, um, not all, but at least a million of <laughs> uh, meters to smart meters in Copenhagen only. That would also allow to uh, you know, create this possibility for customers to, uh, you know, to create this infrastructure for the uh, smart appliances. So, uh, if you, if the telephone needs to charge at the time where it needs to be, where it's cheapest to charge, then um, without having this kind of meters, it's almost impossible. <coughs> then we go further to uh, customer experience. Um, I can only I can tell you very generally that um, we're working um, on almost whole palette of different possibilities that can be done with uh, advanced analytics in terms of, uh, let's say, customer journeys, uh, uh, user segmentation, being able to predict uh, what is the uh, best offer to the, to the person you are talking on the phone, what is the customized uh, service for him, chatbots, etc. Now, our business is mainly well, not mainly, but a lot, dependent a lot on the weather conditions. So being able to um, analyze the weather data and be able to combine it with other types of data, like market data, price data, uh, demand data, supply data, etc. Those things, they are basically um, at the core of being able to predict how much to produce, when to produce, um, at what the balance would be on the grid. <coughs> Which leads us to the actual production, where um, we're talking about one thing is production, another thing is actually thinking about when to maintain if we need to be constantly delivering the, the electricity to the customers. And uh, there's a lot of um, initiatives going on in terms of um, being able to uh, based on the data that is coming from different sensors uh, on the turbines or maybe other relevant data to predict when is it best to maintain. So one of the examples could be, um, let's say, before in time, if the temperature on the turbine is going too high, it would simply stop. Um, then there was a, an initiative group that has been analyzing the, that data and combining it with a predictive model that they have self-developed. Uh, and um, so they, they can actually predict when is it best to send a person, a technician, to be able to kind of uh, investigate what's happening on that in that turbine and maybe actually uh, fix it. Um, well, that's something that is happening in the turbine. Another thing is actually everything that is lying around being able to serve um, the maintenance. So let's say if, uh, if the weather is fine and uh, the, the turbine is turning and suddenly it has stopped, before in time we would need to kind of send someone. And if the weather is too bad, right, then it's either impossible to send someone or it's too expensive. The reason is that all of our uh, wind farms, they are basically located offshore. 
And offshore business is a bit different than the onshore business because um, you need to take into consideration too many other factors. So, um, for example, being able to send a ship uh, to, the, to the wind farm um, would actually cost you money. But if the height of the wave on the sea is too high, then according to regulation, you are not allowed to send anyone. And that would actually mean that we would need to wait until it's allowed to sail. This is happening not only for the wind, uh, wind farms or uh, offshore wind. Um, there is a lot of work has been done in terms of um, actual uh, plants, the, the production plants, electricity production plants. Um, my colleague has mentioned just before that there <laughs> in some of the plants, there are still analog uh, meters are s uh, installed, which actually makes it a bit difficult to read the data from them. But if having that data, I mean, having that data would allow you to make even better analysis. So there is a lot of um, uh, initiatives going on in terms of improving the data collection on the plants to be uh, able to digitalize them as well. Every everything that I just mentioned, this is happening on a scale where we need to operate and at the same time try to innovate and get new projects done. Um, one of the new projects that has been um, on, the, on the map right now, uh, that was a Renaissance project. And the Renaissance project was actually related to being able to extract a value from the, from the waste. So basically, it's a mechanical process that divides your uh, household uh, waste into um, metals and plastics and something that can be digested by enzymes. So that part, this, the last part, is being shipped to a specific uh, turbine where, with help of different enzymes, it's been uh, you know, converted into methane gas. And the methane gas can then be used for something else, like burning or creating something, uh, some other value out of that. So basically, waste in, money out. Yet all of this is happening with help of data that is, that is being transferred with uh, uh, USB sticks sometimes. That, would, that creates another problem for us in IT where we need to be able to help those analysts uh, to create value out of that data so they can have a place to, to actually start working with that data. Um, another initiative was, um, or another project that is running and is also, also been uh, implemented recently. There is a client already in the UK. Um, it's on an energy as a service um, basis where people um, or productions that are, um, that have, so let's say, different plants, uh, they have their own electricity production. They have a possibility to sell their excessive capacity to, to the grid through the platform that um, um, guys from my team have been actually really developing in coding, actually, right? So um, this is all good. This is all fine. The problem is many of the things that we're working with right now are actually very basic data collection problems. Identifying an algorithm is not always a problem. Getting the right data, it is a problem. So <coughs> long before the whole digital strategy started, we've been telling the business that we need a place where we could actually collect the data in a way that it will be uh, cheap to store, easy to access, and it will be democratized, democratized so that everyone can get access to it. So, because we had this philosophy that, you know, the, the data is, a, is kind of a currency, and it's a different currency. If I have a dollar and I go out and buy a coffee for it, then the dollar is gone, I consume the coffee. In order to, for me to buy a new coffee, I need to, to earn another dollar. When it comes to data, I can take the data 
And if I have zillions of different use cases that would use this data, that can be used at the same time, and it will add value to the, to the business. So, <coughs> like, I've been talking to one of my uh, colleagues, uh, Simon, <laughs> and I asked him, Simon, why don't we start doing the, a lot of different nice artificial intelligence solutions? And he said, you know what, with time, maybe, but at the, at the moment, the problems that we're facing are actually collecting the right quality data. So, Simon, by the way, this is the <laughs> solution that we also want to show you that, uh, that allows you to collect the data in a way that it will be, you, would don't, you don't need to think about like how to do it. It will be there for you. Just tell us what data you need. <laughs> um, so when, when we have this um, kind of situation where the things that need, they need to run, uh, the old things they need to run, the new things need to be implemented, there is a lot of work going on. Um, it's very important to have kind of an agreement on how to do things. The old projects, uh, the old waterfall projects that we had in IT, they became absolutely impossible to use. And um, um, s business became very proactive and they started to kind of implement new, not new, but uh, started to employ ag agile methods uh, to, to uh, you know, um, to do stuff. So one of the first um, innovation labs that has been there um, has been bringing together IT and non-IT people um, to work on specific uh, value propositions and being able to create minimum viable products that were afterwards uh, sent to, uh, uh, to production. So um, it has been in a way that um, within a year after this lab has been working, there was a couple of new labs opening up after that. And all those labs, they were actually creating value on different uh, parts of the business units. So uh, the lab in the sales department would be looking at the churn analysis, the labs that are working in wind power, they will be working on op operation optimization and predictive uh, maintenance. Those who are working on other parts, working on other types of businesses, right? Um, when this has been a problem, it has been a problem when people or uh, data scientists sitting in those labs started to create so many different models that maybe sometimes are reuse of the same thing, sometimes not, but I it has been many different models running different places. And uh, they started to come to us and say, uh, you know what, can you not take over this IT, mo uh, this model from us so that we don't spend time actually to check whether it was a code that was wrong or whether it was the integration that was wrong, etc. So there has been a kind of, we've been talking about centralizing the, the, the modeling part of it. So basically being able to control um, all the models that are running on di in different um, um, initiative groups and being able to um, actually help them to free them up so that they can concentrate on new development and being able to improve their models rather than sitting and maintaining those models. This is based, um, it can be done differently, but the one that we've been trying to um, kind of um, play around with was uh, based on the container technologies in, in uh, Docker. So, um, some of the key takeaways from this uh, presentation is that as an IT person, I would need to say that a business probably doesn't need a big data strategy. It either it, it's better to have a business strategy that rooms big data in it. It's also important to have um, data backbone. So, it's so data is available to everyone. 
And it's also very important to have a process around the work that is being done between data scientists, data engineers, IT, and non-IT. One of the things probably that is not standing on this slide is also um, once we have these things, many of uh, a lot of value can be added by actually having a very simple model in reality. So without going to extremes and building, uh, you know, um, huge networks, uh, neural networks, with having the right data, a lot of value can be added by smaller models. That's it. Thank you very much.